Okay, hi Sam. Uh, so, a jam. Today and yesterday, we've been uh, trying to play duo recordings in real time uh, on, the, on, on the bass and the piano, um, and it's been working just about. Okay, and we've been able to play uh, sort of jazz standards and so on in time together. So, uh, I want to mention at the start that we haven't invented anything new. Um, what we did is saw it on Dan Tepfer's page and on uh, the page of a band called Mama's Gun as well. Yeah. Uh, and we sort of uh, looked at how Dan Tepfer had done it at least and tried to do it ourselves. And we thought we'd make a little, little video just to um, show how two non-expert people went through the process and share our screens and show all the different commands that we had to do to set this software up. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's uh, the idea and it's gonna be quite a rambling, possibly overly long uh, video, but the <laughs> idea will be that after you watch it, if you just listen to everything that happens and watch everything that happens, you'll be able to do it yourself if you have a yeah. fast enough interconnection and so on. You can okay. rumble along with us. Yeah, yes, great. exactly, yeah, that, that'll be the way. So it's gonna be like the worst podcast you ever saw. <laughs> I suppose. Um, okay, cool, so as I said, we're not experts at all. This is just how we did it um, and we want, we want to explain it in an accessible way. Um, you might have suggestions which are better, uh, so do let us know. Uh, and we're not going to solve the whole problem. So we've only done duo so far. We're not going to solve the problem of doing trio, but we can talk a, a bit about how that might happen. You know? Yeah. Some ideas. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and finally, just just to finish the preamble, uh, if anything is interesting or helpful to you, and if you're in a position to be able to do so, um, maybe donate to Help Musicians UK, who are doing some fantastic work at the moment to to help yeah, musicians in the them. UK. Um, okay, so that's good. Uh, and then from the outset, I'll say also we're, we're going to include some kind of notes in the video description of all the different links that we mention, the, the key ones anyway. Yes. So there's no need to try and squint in and, and write down any, uh, any link, discuss all these different things. So uh, just a, a little bit about how it um, works, this thing, because as we know, Zoom, which we're using to, to talk at the moment, is not fast enough to play in, in a real time. Okay, no. but the reason that this method is, and it's based on Jack and on Jack Trip, which are bits we, of software. We, we, we that... can demonstrate that for anyone who didn't know. If I yeah. say one, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So if I say, uh, now if you say one, two, three, I'll four, I'll say one again or something. Okay, one, two, three, four, one. Yeah, that's terrible. So so Sam has pretty good time uh, as a as a jazz musician, <laughs> and that was a, that was about <laughs> about a second late. Okay, so so yeah, in case it wasn't clear already, Zoom is is not fast enough. Um, but it turns out that it is possible if you have a fast internet connection to to get audio in close enough to real time to play. Um, mm. I was speaking to a friend of mine, Joe Pearson, about this recently, just just to, to figure out something about the uh, underlying technology that has been used by Jack and Jack Trip, the software that we're going to use. Uh, and he was telling me that it's based on something called the UDP protocol. So that's a particular method of internet com communication, uh, which is quite rough and ready. Okay, so, so normally when one computer communicates to another computer, uh, it will first check that the other computer is there and ready to, to, uh, to listen. It will send some data and then it will wait for the other computer to tell this, this computer uh, that it received the data. So it's like, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, here's some data. Did you receive the data? Yes, I received the data. Here's some of the data. Have you received that data? You know, and so on and so on. So there's lots of checking um, mm -hmm. that the data is going where it's supposed to be. In, in that sense, it's a bit like a telephone call. Well, that, this is what it says on Wikipedia. So in a telephone call, you establish the connection first of all, and then the communication takes place. Okay? Yeah. In contrast, UDP is a protocol that is a bit more like posting letters through doors. Okay? If someone posts a letter, uh, and someone else posts a letter to you, even if they were posted in a certain order, uh, it's not guaranteed that those will arrive in the same order that they were posted, okay? Because one may be coming from somewhere else, one may be coming from somewhere else, the speed of the postman may be different or whatever, you know? So there's, there's no guarantee that um, the data gets there in the right order. Also, in general, you don't send a, a letter back saying, yes, I received that letter. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. you do, but, but the person doesn't immediately know that you received the letter, okay? Send straight also, through without any checks, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, straight, straight through without any checks. What, what and does moreover, it stand for? It stands, I think it stands for User Datagram Protocol, but I might be wrong. Yeah, it's colloquially, <laughs> it's, yeah, it, yeah it's, the, the colloquial kind of uh, interpretation is unreliable datagram protocol because it's, it's unreliable in the sense that if there's any um, errors in communication, you don't know about it, okay? Exactly. Just so, so, what, so what happens is that, is that one computer 
it's just blindly sending data at the other computer. It's not checking with, whether it arrives there. It's not checking that it arrives in the right order. And it's not even checking that the other computer exists. Okay, And then the other computer is doing the same thing. So they're both just shouting at each other, more, more or less, a constant stream of data. Could that and theoretically open itself up to security threats? Um, no, I don't think so. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about security threats here because there is something that I need to do on my end about, about security that is a bit um, potentially dodgy, but uh, turns out not, not to be. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll yeah, talk about, about security. I'm posted. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, so the, the, to sum up all of that, the, the point of this internet protocol that, it, that this software uses is that because it doesn't do any of this error checking or any of this um, acknowledgement of receipt of the data or anything like that, it takes very little time. Okay, so all that stuff which is normally done in what's called TCP communication protocol, all, all that checking and everything takes a lot of time, whereas UDP is, is very fast precisely because one computer doesn't even have a guarantee that the other one is there or receiving the data. It just fires data. Okay. Just comes comes straight through. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So um yeah, so that that's that. Uh, and yeah, just to just to finish off on that, as I said, we're using uh, Zoom and we're using just our internal uh, computer microphones for the audio and for the video. Okay, um, the real time audio, i.e. the instruments, we'll get to that later on. And obviously, that's not been done through Zoom, but just for simplicity, we're, we're speaking to each other through Zoom. It's completely possible to to extend what we did what we did here, um, and to enable speaking through the real time connection as well. So if we have terrible rapport, we can blame it on the Zoom later. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, cool. So that's the preamble uh, about everything uh, that we're going to talk about. We're just going to go through all the different steps that you need to do to, to set it up. So without further ado, uh, as the first section I have in my notes, it says prerequisites. Okay, so this is the stuff you need to have in place, first of all. Um, so we both have Mac computers, Yeah. don't we? Uh, they're not particularly new. When's yours from? Uh, 2011, I think. Okay, mine's 2009. So, so oh, yeah. I, I thought um, I thought yours was older than that. So, okay, but they're, they're yeah, they're both old and not particularly amazing uh, Mac computers. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but they uh, but they work, and so obviously we're not going to be able to say anything about how to set up on Windows. I think. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the other prerequisite is that uh, both of us must have an Ethernet connection to the internet router that we're using. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the router in your case is this kind of um, medium-sized box that says Sky on it. In my yep. case, it's a medium-sized box. Bring, good job you bring that up. Because yeah, exactly. <laughs> in my case, it's a medium-sized box that says Hyperoptic on it, because I have a Hyperoptic um, internet connection. Uh, and an Ethernet cable allows you connect, to connect to that directly via a wire, uh, rather than via a, a Wi-Fi. Okay? And if the you... idiot's guide to the Ethernet cable would be it's the one that looks a bit like a kind of phone. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A little bit like that. Um, but if yeah, if you Google, there's plenty of information about Ethernet cables. Uh, yeah, suffice to say, if you try it with Wi-Fi, it just won't work. Okay, because the the latency that is introduced by Wi-Fi is is enough to just make everything uh, fail. Okay, you need to have as fast as possible uh, everywhere. Now I'll, I'll start to share screen now because the second thing you need to do is a speed test of your internet. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll describe it uh, as I do it. But you can just Google the words speed test, and that will enable you to use uh, Google's internal speed test. So I just did that here, speed test Google. I'm okay. going to run the speed test, and it's going to send a small amount of data to some server somewhere uh, and see how fast it happens. Zero speed. It's coming, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, edit points. I'm going to stick my hands up like that for an edit point. Um, okay, let's... I reckon you have to include that. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> You've written sped test. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. We're on. <laughs> okay, edit point back in. Okay, so this is the download speed, and this is how quickly your or how much bandwidth at least your uh, computer can receive. So, how much data uh, per second. This is the upload speed. Is that speed. what bandwidth is in language? Yeah, so bandwidth is like the width of the, of the stream, uh, the width of the river that's going to, how much water can, uh, can, can flow per second sort of thing. So I'll, I'll discuss this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Could you um, give me another, another analogy, if that's okay? I'm a bit confused by the stream and the river and the... Yeah, okay. What, what exactly are we talking about when we say bandwidth? Okay, so, 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 okay. We have the intuitive notion of a fast internet connection and a slow internet connection, okay? Mm -hmm. But it also depends on how much data you're trying to send. Okay, 
Okay. If, if I just want to send you a text file with one line in it, okay, it's going to be a really tiny file. Um, it might be the case that I can send that to you extremely quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be described by the latency here. This is one millisecond, so that's very, very low latency. And that's the kind of inherent speed at which, at which a single packet of data, so to speak, can get through from, from me to uh, somewhere else on the internet or, or mm -hmm. to you, okay? Bandwidth uh, is more complicated than that because it's, it's, it's to do with how, mu how much data you can send per second, okay? Yeah, so, the, so the ping here, the latency, is one millisecond, that's just a time. That's how fast can you send the, the smallest unit of data that you're allowed if you don't worry about how much data you send. But if you do worry about how much data you send, it's the bandwidth. So I, really, I guess the width of the stream does make sense then. So you talk yeah, about exactly. So, so a, a very fast flowing bandwidth. river, yeah, exactly. A very fast flowing river might be very narrow, right? And so one bit of water gets from here to here really quickly, might be flowing really quickly. But if you want to get a lot, a lot of water from here to here, Mm -hmm. then it's going to take a long time because the bandwidth of the river is quite narrow. So it's that, that kind of, that kind of vibe, I think. Okay. I, I did say I'm not an expert, right? Um, but no, that's, no, no. That, that's basically the, the idea. And, and the, these are the things which are important for like streaming Netflix on the internet or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Download on the left is usually what is the higher number, okay? Because we normally care about uh, download speeds in terms of streaming video. We don't have to send much data, but we have to receive a lot of data, okay? Mm -hmm. Usually one's upload speed is slower than one's download speed. And you'll see that if you try and upload a big file to retransfer or Dropbox or something mm -hmm. like that. It often takes a lot longer than it would if someone had sent you a big file by WeTransfer or Dropbox or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's because the upload speed is usually slow. But in my case, uh, I've called Hyperoptic just earlier on today and asked them to upgrade my upload speed to this. So you have okay? upload speed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really big um <laughs> and so it doesn't need to be that big but basically the numbers you're looking for here are uh, maybe in the region of like 20 megabits at least download and then for upload at least 10 and ideally 15 okay mm -hmm. so just um what's the kind of lowest you could go well to pull the curtain back a bit like earlier on today we had some problems so we started trying, trying to make the video and everything sounded like shit um, and it turned out it was because my internet upload speed was really slow. So I had five megabits per second, right? And what that means is that when I'm trying to send the real time audio to you, mm. I'm not sending it fast enough, okay? Um, and so it just doesn't arrive in time and you get lots of glitches in the audio and it sounded, sounded terrible, okay? So yeah. yeah, I would say for download, hopefully about 20 and hopefully most people have more than that these days, mm -hmm. uh, in London at least anyway, obviously it depends. Um, and then for the upload, at least 10 and hopefully 15, okay? Yep. Yep. And obviously the ping should be low as well. So the, the inherent kind of speed at which data goes should be quite low. Um, yep. The other thing to mention is that we're quite close together geographically. So I don't know how this would be with someone in America. I mean, I, I do know if it would be worse. <laughs> um, yep. But I don't know how it would be with someone in London to Leeds, for example, you know? Uh, it, it might yeah. Be okay. Isn't it within seventy kilometers or something? It, this this it's, it works okay, and then and then beyond that, it becomes okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Was, was that in that thing that you that out. you read? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So 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 basically, you just have to try it and see. I suppose mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the good thing is that if your internet is fast, then everything that we're going to des describe to you now, um, in terms of software, is all free. So you don't really lose anything about the time. Um, Save that sweet sweet yeah. cash. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Okay, that's fine. So now I'm I've got my speed test, I've done that. Now I'm going to do something called port forwarding. So I'm going into my router uh, and I'll show you how to do uh, that. What we need to do is we need to tell my internet router to pass a certain kind of traffic onto my computer. So my mm -hmm. laptop is, is here, you know, in my hands um, and it needs to receive a certain kind of traffic. Now, if I open the network in the system preferences of, of my uh, Mac here, mm -hmm. what you see is I've got ethernet here. And this IP address here, 192.168.1.144, it's fine for me to read that out because that's not my public IP address, okay? Mm. This is the IP address by which one computer on my network knows this computer, if you see what I mean. Okay, so, so these are- details, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, it happens to be my pin, but <laughs> let's skip past that. Um, and then the router, under here, 192.168.1.1, that's the local IP address of my internet router, okay? Yeah. So as I said, again, all, all these things are completely uh, secure because they're 
it's like a kind of nickname within the family, you know, like whatever your family calls you that the external world doesn't call you, you know, this, this is like those nicknames. Okay, so the, the way to get onto the administration page of your router is to type 192.168.1.1 or whatever that thing was, you know, so, so this, this value here into an internet browser. Okay, and when I do that, I get to this page. ZTE is the name of the company that made my, uh, made my internet router. Okay. So I'm typing in my password, which fortunately you can't, can't see. The password is probably on a sticker on, on the router itself. For example, it's the admin password for the, for the router. And then you have a screen that's something like this, but could be quite different depending on the, the particular company that made it. But mm -hmm. in my case, I go into internet here. I go into security, right? And then I go to port forwarding, okay? I've got a few things here, what does, but what does port forwarding mean? Well, I, I'll, I'll explain that. So, so, okay. so, uh, yeah, as I said, the IP addresses that we that we just looked at, they were all local IP addresses. But what I've had to do in order to make this work is I phoned up Hyperoptic, my internet company, and I asked them for an external IP address. Okay, so that means my router is known by the rest of the internet as something something something. So it it, it has its own IP address that someone in this case, you can send data to. Okay. The question is, what happens to that data when it hits the router? Because the router hasn't, the router hasn't got any software on it. You know, I don't plug my base into the router, for example. Okay. Mm. What port forwarding does is, on a particular port, which is a kind of virtual data socket. Okay. That that the um, you know, it's like imagine the the river or the stream is going through a series of pipes. You know, and they're all yeah. parallel like this. They're all different ports. Okay. So. This tells the router, when you receive traffic from the external internet on a particular port, send it to a member of the local network, my laptop, okay? Um, so that it can do something with it, okay? So if I open one of these, I mean, th this is the one that's relevant here, Jack Trip, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a, these are all ones that I think didn't work. Uh, so Jack Trip is the one here. I've given it a name, for protocol, I've put TCP and UDP, but actually it could just be UDP there. So UDP is the, is the fast data protocol. What would this have looked like when you first came to it? it? They would have just been empty. Okay, so uh, there's no port forwarding by default normally. You okay, have to so create a new item. Can... Yeah, and that's, and that's what I did, you know. Okay. So yeah, good question. Um, okay, and then one host IP address. One means, I think, wide area network. And yeah, by doing this, I could have made it so that only certain external IP addresses are able to send data to my, to my router, if you see what I mean. Or, or everyone can send it to the router, but only certain IP addresses will be able to send data uh, that goes via the port forwarding to my laptop. Okay, so remember, this is about data hitting the router from the external internet and the router deciding what to do with that. Okay, now. What this says here, LAN host, that's the IP address of my computer, of my laptop that I'm on now. Yeah. Okay. And I'll show you that in the system preferences. That's what it says there. 192.168.1.144. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So the router knows that that IP address is, is my laptop. And that means that when anybody on the, uh, the World Wide Web, and of course I could have restricted this just so um, it was uh, you, but that's, that's a bit of detail. Whenever somebody on the World Wide Web sends data on these ports, so 4464 and 4 to 4464. So that just means only one port, okay? Mm -hmm. You can actually set a range. So you, you could set um, 4464 to 4468 or something. Mm -hmm. But I happen to, to know, because it says in the documentation that Jack Trip only needs this single port. Okay, so for the purpose of this, you know, anyone doing this, they could just copy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If, if, you, if you were gonna do trio plays or something like that, you would need to have more ports open. But that's beyond okay. the scope of this uh, video. Okay, yeah. uh, we just need one port for person-to-person -person, uh, duo. So, 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 so um, someone trying this for the first time could, apart from apart from the uh, the LAN host, the local area network host, could yeah. just kind of copy what's written here, basically. Yeah, exactly. They can copy what's written here. I would, rec I would, um, yeah. Obviously, they would have to change the LAN host based on what they see in their own um, system preferences. Uh, mm -hmm. This guy yeah, again. Come on. Um, and I would suggest actually that the other person who's trying to communicate with them finds out what their external IP address is. You can just Google what is my IP address. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then you can put it into here because that seems sort of more secure you know i i could have made it so that only you from your ip address yeah could has, do it. has this thing happen uh okay. but in in it's fact it's, but if you don't want to overcomplicate it not the end yeah of the exactly and, and in fact the simple and more secure thing to do is just to set this up for the period that you're doing this uh live uh duet with with somebody how, and how then, would you and, off. Well, you can you can just disable it by pressing off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so great. so that that's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to make this video and I'm, going to, and I'm going to turn everything off, and so there'll be no port forwarding going on. And then next time we want to do something, I'll just come and switch it on again. That's the that's the deal. Great. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good. So that means that stuff that hits my router is going to uh, come on that particular port is and the one that uh, Jack Trip, the audio software that we're using, uh, is going to hit that port and come through to my laptop so that it can do something with that data. Okay, Great. so that was port forwarding. Um, yeah, and as I said, I needed to ring up my internet supplier and ask to have port forwarding and an external uh, IP address enabled. Yeah, uh, anybody can do that. Um, okay, fine. How long did and it take them to do that? Was that just a simple? That was just a, they're, they're really good hyper optic. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm actually trying to get a discount for making this video, so that's why I keep saying they're good, but they, but they really are good. <laughs> so, so, so today is Saturday. <laughs> And they were um, they were open today, and they just, for example, they upgraded my speed and whatever, and they put the port forward in. Um, they enabled this on my router and so on. And by the way, Yamaha keyboards are great. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. If you think of anything else, then feel 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 free. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the super noodles I'll have after this. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheap enough already, surely. Um, okay, cool. So I think I think we're nearly there. But the final thing to do, I think I'll put this in in this section is I want to know what is my external IP address, okay? okay? So what I will do is, I'm just gonna go into Google here, I'm gonna type, uh, what is my IP address, okay? Now, okay. when the page comes up, I'm gonna blank it out. Remember to do that, uh, I say to myself, uh, so that people don't know my IP address, but, but in practice, it's, it's not too important. But basically, okay. it's not that one, okay? That's something called an IPv6 address which okay. is uh, not the right one if i click on this thing here i'm looking for the ipv4 address down here and it is this is going to be blurred out but it's number number dot number number dot number 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 dot number dot two two dot two 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 dot seven exactly yeah or five 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 or something like that but it, yeah <laughs> anyway it's, it's a series of um basically four numbers separated by full stops okay and so I, that could be confusing, I think, actually. Uh, so, yeah, when you say yeah. four numbers, you mean like, you know, they could have multiple digits. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 72 yeah. would be one number point. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, I'm going to read out a, an example of an IPv4 address. It's not going to be mine. Okay. But 74.56.217.82. Okay. That's an IP address. And the dots are part so of it. Keith Jarrett's IP address. Exactly. <laughs> <Too much. laughs> exactly. So, then. What, it, what needs to happen is that I write down that address, it should be static, um, mm -hmm. i.e. it won't change, because that's what I arranged with my internet provider. Um, and I told you that IP address as well. Okay, so, so you're able to uh, have that written down and you, and you know that that means me. Okay? Yeah. So that's the preamble in terms of everything apart from the, the software that we're gonna use. Uh, it's just checking your internet connection uh, and setting up your router in, in the correct way. The final thing to mention, this is quite important actually, um, is only one end of the connection had to do this complicated stuff with the with the router setup. Okay, mm -hmm. so you haven't been on your router setting up port forwarding because the way that this works is that I act as a server mm -hmm. for the audio connection. You act as a client for the audio connection, or, or your software acts as a client. Okay, so for, for non-computer buffs who are kind of yeah scared by words like server and all yeah yeah stuff, yeah. So, so exactly what that means. Not really. It, it's just it's just like. Traditionally, like a server is some some powerful computer that stores a lot of data that people want to see and then serves it out to them. Okay. okay. So, for example, the Netflix servers, wherever wherever they are and wherever they are, they store all the films and the TV programs. Mm -hmm. And then a client, i.e., a subscriber of Netflix, mm -hmm. that program uh, or that internet browser uh, sort of talks to the server and says, "Give me uh, Debs episode two." For example, mm -hmm. we've seen devs. It's really good. I have on the, on the whole Red Dwarf got the uh, entire oh, way so to the Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> devs is really good, man. I recommend it. Um, 
so yeah, so, so the server is the thing which, which kind of just receives those requests and then sends out the data, okay? Uh, so that in, in that sense, my laptop is gonna act as a server because my laptop is the one which is able to be talked to by an external computer via the IP address. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it sits there waiting to receive a connection, okay? I tell you my IP address. Yeah. You you initiate <laughs> exactly. you you, initi you initiate the connection to my computer, um, and then uh, and then the connection is is sort of established, and, and we we send we send the data to each other. But in the case of a duo thing, the status of server versus client is kind of arbitrary. It just means that for Jackrit to work, one person has to be the server. Okay, you can't yeah. just have two clients going direct to each other. Um, and so the person who's going to be the server, which is me. Uh, needs to have this port forwarding and this external IP address open, okay? And the other yeah. person doesn't need to have that. But the other person still does need to have a fast upload speed, okay? Both sides need that to be, to be the That's case. Requirement, yeah. Yeah, so any, is there anything um, that we missed out in that section? Because I think we'll take an uh, edit point there. Uh, I think it's fine, but um, we can always have a look over it now if you like. Yeah, okay, sounds good. So we'll be back in uh, a jiffy. Oh. Okay, so we're back. We've done, we've gone through um, setting up the internet, checking it has the correct speed requirements, uh, mm -hmm. and setting up port forwarding on one end, uh, i.e., my end, uh, for the person whose whose computer is going to be the server, in, in inverted commas. Um, okay, so now we get onto the process of installing the actual software that we're going to use. Uh, mm -hmm. As I said, uh, it's. Uh, not too complicated, but it's it's kind of interesting to learn about it as well. But we mm. will show everything that everyone that someone needs to do to to get this working. Okay, we're we'll, we'll literally going to go through it step by step. But just to give a bit of background, um, one piece of software that is important is called Jack, and it's a kind of uh, low latency. Um, it's called a server, but that's confusing. But it, it's a low latency sort of background process that runs on your computer and allows different programs to pass audio to each other. It might be useful given the, the presumably the title of the video, yeah. uh, just to point out that Jack is different to Jack Trip. Yes, exactly. So, so Jack Trip is another piece of software that makes use of Jack, sort of, mm -hmm. okay? But Jack itself um, is, is just this kind of background sound process that enables mm -hmm. lots of other cool things to happen. So that, for example, there are, sorry, I hope a calendar thing doesn't come up when I'm sharing the screen. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what, anyway. what's in your calendar, John? <laughs> well, no, nothing, but it's just, it's, you know, this is confusing to people. Um, okay. So there's lots of other stuff that is built on Jack. So for example, there's digital audio workstations, which make use of Jack as a way to route audio inputs and outputs to each, to each other, that sort of thing. There are um, mixers that enable, that use Jack to enable various things to happen. There's, uh, people might, might have heard of Soundflower or Loopback, um, for example, which are things that enable you to use the sound output of one program as the sound input to another program. So for example, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure I remember having used that in the past to download some music off YouTube. Yeah, that's what it was. It was, it was before you could download just Google how to download YouTube music, you know. You and, uh, to, you I'm admitting to, to it to a crime, I suppose. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah, but I was about I was about twelve at the time, and and I was I think oh, yeah. I was uh, yeah I was uh, I was precocious, and and so I was um, and I was using this software to basically play the audio out of YouTube, and then mm. route that in turn backward. That's why there's a software called Loopback that does that, and route that back again into a an input, you know. Anyway, so Jack is a, just a kind of utility service that, that enables that to happen, okay? So what we need to do, first of all, um, is to just install Jack, okay? okay. So I, I'm gonna briefly share my screen to give you a couple of um, key links, but I want to uh, emphasize that all the links that we mentioned here and a few other ones, for example, to, to videos that we found helpful or documents that we found helpful will be in the video description. Okay, so so don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, small fee. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where the money's gonna be. Um, okay, cool, so I'd share whiteboard like this. Okay, so these are the links that I was talking about. Uh, jackaudio.org slash downloads. Um, this is to download Jack. The second link here, we'll get to that later on, but that's the one where you download Jack Trip. <clears throat> Again, we'll put them in the description, so don't worry about that. So now, um, we thought how we do this is that I will pass the screen sharing over to Sam 
and we will sort of run through the process of, of installing these things. Obviously, Sam has actually already installed them because we got it working yesterday. So we won't literally go through the process of reinstalling the whole thing, but we'll, we'll go do as good as, right? That, that sort of, yeah. um, that will work. <laughs> so I'm sure I'll get it wrong this time as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you, if you start uh, screen sharing, um, okay. and then I've put, I've put in the Zoom chat that we have, I've put a... Um, Wonky. Um, okay, uh, so screen share. That's yeah. my desktop. Hopefully nothing. There we go. Okay, great. Okay. And if you look in the Zoom chat, the first link that I've sent you there uh, would be the, the place where we're going to download Jack from. Okay, I have a slight issue. Give me a second. Yeah. I can't look at the Zoom chat whilst doing that, so I'm just going to copy these. There we go. Okay, fine. Okay, let's try that again. Um, Okay, so that's sharing the screen. So yeah. I should go to the I should go to the first one of these, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so just delete the second link there. Okay. You've, uh, got, two, you've got two links pasted into the thing there. Yeah, let me just get rid that's of that. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, okay. I think I think might have a load of noise in the background there because my house just came in. So I don't know if we want to just do that bit again. Okay, oh, no, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, the noise in general is fine, but let's do that anyway again because um, okay. this is more elegant. Now. Okay, so now. Uh, Edit point, I suppose. Okay, so now we're, we're back in mm -hmm. uh, and Sam is sharing screen and he's just gonna download uh, Jack from this website that we, uh, that we have in the address back there. Okay. okay, great, let's go for it. Okay, so if you scroll down a little bit, yeah, yeah, and so Linux is a different operating system. What we're looking for is OS uh, X or OS 10, that's what we're using on our, on mm -hmm. our Macs. Uh, and we don't want the source code, we want what's called the binary, so the actual executable um, stuff. And that. that is that is this one here, where it says mm -hmm. Jack OS X zero nine two B three. Okay, so if you click on that, you'll be able to download it, um, yeah. and that will go into your downloads. And I think it's a is it a DMG or a PKG file? One one of one of, one of the two. I think it's a PKG. Um, maybe open your downloads and just just have a check. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. it's a zip file there, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it says yesterday, Jack OS X uh, 092 B3. Yeah. And that's a zip file. Yeah. So you just unzip that file. I mean, you know, again, we, we, we don't need to teach people how to install yeah, something really because it's the kind of thing you can just Google. It's simple enough. Be um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you install that. And then if you want to open applications on the left hand side of, of, this, of this window here, okay. we're going to just have a look at what that enables us to, to have. So there's a folder called Jack, which is present because we've installed uh, Jack from, from that link. And mm -hmm. the things in here are some documentation, which uh, if the video is, is good enough, you might not need. Uh, extras, I don't know what's in there, because uh, I haven't looked, uh, but Jack Pilot is the, is the key thing, okay? So maybe you want to open that. Okay. Great. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so this is the first bit of uh, stuff that, that sort of uh, matters, I suppose. Jack Pilot is a graphical user interface uh, that enables you to control the Jack process. Okay, so Jack, as I said, is this kind of background thing. I, I feel like words like graphical user interface, even though it just basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Oh so, so, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, as I said, Jack is a background process that you can't see it happening. It just runs in the background. Okay, mm -hmm. just like, for example, there's a background service for um, mail notifications, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you, you get mail notifications even if you don't have mail open, you know? That's because of the background service uh, running. Mm -hmm. um, so Jack in itself, it doesn't present any visual information to the, to the user, okay? Jack Pilot is therefore a user interface for Jack. It's something that enables you to control that, that background process. Mm -hmm. And it's a graphical user interface because it's a uh, graphical. graphical. See it, okay? <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's what it says on the tin, really. Um, the, the other program in there called QJack CTL, that stands for QJack Control, that's, that's basically something else that does the same thing, I think. And people, okay. some people say that's better, um, or it's we more, more feature-filled, feature yeah, but, um, but we've just been using Jackpilot, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go into Jackpilot and have a look around. Uh, doesn't seem much there, and we'll leave it stopped at the moment. So we don't press start, because that would start the Jack service, and before we do that, we want to mm -hmm. set up some stuff, okay? So yeah. if you click in the top left corner on Jackpilot and open the preferences, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are some uh, various important settings. So 
most of the defaults are correct. Driver core audio is correct. And then for input device and output device, what you've got it set here to is Sapphire. And that's the name of your audio interface that you've, yeah, that you've got. Yeah, Sapphire Pro Audio. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we should add something to the first bit of the video that says that. Um, I remember to do that. Um, okay, but anyway. I, I, so you, I, I, yeah, I reckon that's sim simple enough. So, so yeah. yeah, Sapphire Pro is an audio interface, which is just, you know, you, we could do this if we wanted using using the internal microphones. It's just they wouldn't sound. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. So, so you'd have something real time, but it would sound terrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so basically, yeah, we, we both have um, USB audio interfaces enabling us, us to, to plug kind of instruments in and get a better sound. In. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. And then the sample rate, we'll leave that at 44,100 because that's fine. Um, buffer size. So we've been playing with this a little bit um, up and down, but again, neither of us is an expert. Um, but the, the basic picture seems to be a bit like when you change the buffer size in logic, and you should look into how to do that if you, if you haven't done it before. Uh, it's, it's like the bigger the buffer is, the less chance there is of uh, data being lost or miscommunicated, or for example, in logic, if the buffer is too small, um, and you have lots of plugins going, Logic will just stop playing and tell you there's been an audio overrun. You know, have you seen that before? Wouldn't necessarily count on everyone knowing what Logic is or how, how it works. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So log Logic is um, uh, recording software, okay? Exactly. Uh, and, and, and basically, the, the, the only place that I've seen this word buffer size before, really, is in that, uh, mm -hmm. in that software. And what would happen there is if you have a buffer size that's very small and you try and play back a very large multi-track recording, yeah? Mm -hmm then it would complain and say it couldn't process the audio in time, okay? Mm -hmm. Then if you made the buffer size very big, it would never complain of that, but the latency would be higher, okay? And if you're trying to record with a high latency, i.e. A big, a big delay, then that's a problem, okay? So the, same, the picture is roughly the same here. Um, the bigger the buffer size is, it's kind of like, I think it's kind of like anyway, that the, um, the software, kind of fills up bigger buckets. And so you have to wait for the bucket to be full before you can send that bucket down the line, you know, to mm. carry on with the analogy of the water. Water is data. Yeah. There is a lot of water, yeah. I'm thirsty, I suppose. Water as well, everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the buffer size, yeah, if you make it lower, uh, you should be able to get lower latency, but you might have more glitches and more distortion in the, in the audio that you get. If you make it higher than the latency, it might become too large. There's another really a case of fine tuning, isn't it? We've fine been, tuning, yeah, we've exactly. Been fiddling around with it. Um, what there's something that we'll put in the video description. There's a link to something where somebody called Ben something um, has been sort of testing his internet connection prior mm -hmm. to, to doing this and doing some calculations, I think, based on the properties of his connection as to what is the optimal buffer size for him to use, if you see what mm -hmm. I mean. So you can be a bit more rational about it, I think, but in our case, we just did trial and error. Um, there is, I think, a relationship between the sample rate and the latency as well. Um, and I'm not going to say too much because I'm sure that somebody who watches this video will know about that a lot better than, than, than I do. Um, well, I don't think that necessarily matters if you've got an inkling, you're just claiming that you're not an expert. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, well, exactly. Yeah. You can say anything, can't you, if you say you're not an expert. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, yeah, so, so I, it, it could be something like if maybe if the sample rate goes higher, uh, then you can get lower latency, but it requires you to send more data, so you need higher bandwidth to unlock that latency. Maybe something like that, but that's a complete guess. Um, anyway, check it out. So it's, it's something right. to look into. If in, if in doubt, just leave it as it is here. So 44. Don't trust John. Okay. Yeah, and we've, <laughs> and we've chosen a buffer size of 128 because we found that that gives us pretty glitch-free audio, but the latency is still good. Um, mm -hmm. All these boxes are fine. The interface output channels, now that's a property of... Uh, the input device, i.e. the Sapphire audio interface that Sam is using, my case, yeah. it has 16 inputs. Uh, it has eight outputs. Uh, so mm -hmm. that all of that, we just leave it as it is. Um, it's quite a posh interface, actually, if I may say so. It's quite. It's got That's many more inputs and outputs than I have. Only that uh, high grade for me, I'm afraid. Exactly. <laughs> and then <laughs> the, uh, the Jack Router configuration here, I, it seems to me that you would set this to be exactly the same as what is on the interface. So the virtual input channels are what the software presents to the user, you know, um, and mm. where it says auto connect with physical ports, that seems to me sensible. So it automatically assigns the virtual channels to a real channel on the interface, you know? Yeah. So there's no reason that, in short to, uh, to set these to be anything different than what you see in the, in the little bit above there. Okay, 
So those are the preferences set up um, and you can save them. I should say also that you can only access those preferences when the Jack process is not running, okay? And as you see here, it's, it's not running. So then uh, just to kind of uh, fully explore this program, you can press start in Jack Pilot. Okay. That's good. And it's starting the Jack server. That's what it says there, okay? Now remember, we haven't done anything with Jack Pilot yet. Jack Pilot is the thing which enables the, the communication between the two of us. Um, Jack is just running on your computer here. It tells you how much CPU load it's using. And if you just briefly click on routing, the button there that is now um, enabled. Yep. Okay, and then expand both of these menus. Yep. What is CPU, by the way? Uh, central processing unit. It's just the processor on the computer. So it's okay. how much um, how much load it's using. Okay. So <clears throat> um, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, I might sneeze. Uh, fair warning. Okay. So at the moment, there's not much to see in the connections manager here. It's kind of like a patch base. So it's, it's, it's this, this is like plugging in wires, like physical uh, cables between various sockets. You know, but it's done on the computer. Um, I feel like a patch base is quite. Um, uh, technically, patch bay. Yeah. So okay. So so um. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. So it's like having a physical mixing desk, mm -hmm. um, and a bunch of speakers and monitors and plugging everything into the right place so that this this thing goes to this output goes to this speaker, this microphone comes into this part of the desk. So on. So on. Yeah. that's called patch, patching it up in the correct uh, way. Um, at the moment, there's not much to see because system that is referring to your audio interface. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it has 16 uh, inputs, 16, 16 captures there, and it has eight outputs or eight playbacks as, as they're called here. So there's nothing for us to do just yet, yep. but I just wanted to show this window because once we start the Jack pilot program, the thing which enables the audio to be sent over the internet, that will come up as a new entry alongside system in here. And this is where we'll do some of the patching, some of the routing of the audio mm. uh, to make sure that everything has been heard in, in the right way and everything has been recorded in the, in the right way. Okay, Great. so the, uh, if depending how complicated each person's setup is at home, uh, mm -hmm. they'll become quite familiar with this connections manager. Okay. Um, okay, so I think that is more or less it for now. I think we'll, we'll uh, take a mini break there. And in okay. the next section, we'll move on to installing Jack Trip in order to use Jack to send audio uh, over the internet, okay? Sounds good. Right. Okay. Okay, so we're back to the next section. Okay, uh, so here we're going to uh, walk you through installing Jack Trip. And this is the piece of software that uh, needs Jack in order to run. Uh, but this specific piece is the actual bit that sends the audio data from one computer to the other across the internet. Okay, so this is, this is like the key, uh, the key thing really. So Sam mm -hmm. has this link up. Uh, in his uh, browser. And again, this is gonna be in the description, so don't worry about that. Um, and if you scroll down a bit, Sam. Um, okay, the one we want here is Jack Trip uh, 1.1 OSX. So it does it, okay. Do it. Uh, you've got it in your downloads, I think, already. Yeah, already. yeah. Mm. so yeah, exactly. So there it is. So this is here because Sam has downloaded it. If you wanna double click on that and expand it, we'll. we'll I think in this case, we will go through the process of actually how to install this thing because it's not the same as, um, it's not the same as uh, the program that we installed before and it's a bit, bit unusual. Um, <clears throat> okay, so inside JackTrip, we're inside downloads and in the JackTrip folder, uh, there's a text file there called install.txt uh, and uh, if someone uh, wanted to, they could just read that and know what to do, okay? Mm -hmm. But since we've got the video, uh, we may as well show people uh, directly, okay? so. First thing to do is open the terminal. Okay, uh, that, so that's a, you can find through Launchpad, can't you? Just write terminal then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So terminal, this is this is something that many people might not have seen before, but it's a way of running programs and, and manipulating files and so on via the command line. Okay, so this is what every computer was like originally in the 70s before they developed sort of Windows and various other operating systems like, like the Mac operating system, um, mm -hmm. which have a graphical uh, interface. Okay. Is, is this kind of the simplest way? Well, this the is the simplest way to do it. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, it's the most direct way of doing everything. Um, so you don't point and click at all. You just, you literally just type 
Okay, so <coughs> I'll <coughs> walk you through the process of doing that. Obviously, you know what's going on now anyway, but uh, just to introduce this to, to people. So mm -hmm. first thing to do is introduce a few commands. If you type CD, that yep. stands for change directory. Okay, so, so that's command to change to a different directory. But if you type it on its own and press enter, that will get you back to your home directory. And the reason you can tell it's home is because it has that tilde there and it says Sam. Um, a tilde isn't an obvious symbol. Oh, so, yeah, there. okay, tilde is a kind of squiggly line on its side. Yeah. Okay, so just typing CD on its own gets you back to your home folder if you're lost. Um, but we don't want to be here, we need to be inside downloads. Okay, so the next thing to do is to type CD space and capital D, I think it is for downloads. Um, and then OWN, but don't type the rest of it. Instead of that, you can press tab on your keyboard, okay? And that's called tab completion, which is a nice feature of the terminal. Yeah. It's basically aware of what folders exist in, in whatever folder you're in, um, yeah. and, it, and it will complete them for you if you type the first few letters, okay? So, I mean, you, know, you could have just written it yourself if you wanted. Yeah, exactly, that would be fine as well, but it's, it's just, um, we may as well give people some cool uh, terminal tricks at the same time. <laughs> press enter. Okay, so now you can see that the, the prompt uh, has changed, the thing to the left of the cursor. It says mm -hmm. we're in downloads now. Uh, and another way to double check that is to type PWD. What's that stand stands for? for present working directory. So if you press okay. enter now, it will tell you the, the full path, it's called the full, the full uh, mm -hmm. sort of address on your computer, so to speak, of the, the directory that you're in. So you're in forward slash users, forward slash Sam, forward slash downloads. Right. Um, okay, so we've navigated into downloads, this folder on Sam's computer, and we know that the folder um, inside there that we want to get into was called Jack Trip. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can type CD and then space, Jack. Capital or not? No, uh, no. no. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean you, 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 yeah, that's true, but you, you can tell whether it's capital by looking in the finder, right, and just, and just seeing the name. So if, if we went back to there, we went, if you went back into the finder, you would see that the folder had a lowercase j, whereas okay. downloads that we went to before had an uppercase d. I don't think it matters on, on Mac anyway, but it sometimes matters on other systems. Okay, press enter, uh, and then we're inside the Jack Trick folder. So now you can type ls, uh, and that yes, is going to... Yeah, it's going to list everything inside this folder. Okay, so that's a, that's a command that just stands for list. And so these are the various things which are inside there. And this is exactly what you would see if you open the Jack Trip folder inside Finder. Okay, so it's, there's, it's, it's really a close analogy between looking at something on, on the Finder graphically and looking at something in the terminal. Yeah. Yep. Now the uh, file that we want is inside bin. Okay, bin stands for binary. And that mm -hmm. means like an executable program, a program that can be run by the computer. So type CD space bin next. I wonder if for some people it might be worth elaborating on how much so this, this is like, as you say, in the finder going in into one folder and then opening another folder, going into the next one. And yeah, then... exactly, exactly. So, so um, yeah, and another thing to say, by the way, is you only have to do this once, okay? This is just installing a program and you just do it once. So you don't have to go through all this rigmarole every time. Um, you should just be yeah, able to do this. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. But, but what, what you're doing now, yeah, when, when, you, when you type LS, that's just like looking at what's in the folder and obviously a folder can have different subfolders within there. Okay. Then when you type CD, so for example, CD bin, that's as if you double clicked on the subfolder. Okay. So it's, it's like you double clicked on bin and now we're inside bin and uh, we have a different set of things to look at. So if we look at them by pressing, uh, by typing LS again, then enter, there's only one thing inside this folder and it's Jack trip. Now that's, that's the, the executable program uh, that we need to install. Okay, and the way that you install it uh, is very simple in this case. Actually, it, it's just by copying that program to a particular place on the on the file system, so on a particular directory inside the computer um, where this kind of file lives. Okay, so that, that basically the operating system expects this kind of file to be in a certain place. So we're going to put it there, and then it will be able to be run in the future. Okay. So again, this is only a one-time process. You just install it once and then it's available forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just gonna tell you the command uh, over, over voice and then you just type, type, type as you go, okay? So- I think you, this terminal stuff is scaring anyone, just, 
just copy and paste what we're doing, you know, just... Yeah, exactly. Follow, you, follow, you, follow, follow you, the instructions. You, you, you literally, d you don't need to know anything about what I'm talking about <laughs> to do it. <laughs> you just need to follow what Sam types and then it'll be fine. Thank God for that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so the command we need here is mm. S-U-D-O. S-U-D-O. Space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sudo, what that does is it does something as an administrator. So it gives the, the user the authority to copy into this particular part of the, of the disk. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then CP. C, CD, was that? Uh, CP, sorry. CP. What's yeah. that sound for? Uh, put space. Uh, so that sounds for copy. Okay. So oh, okay. We're, kind of, we're kind of trading commands together. So this, what this means in English is as an administrator with, with privileges, copy. And then the, the next thing we're going to do is tell it what we're going to copy. Okay. okay. So next you can just type Jack Trip. Okay, that's the file that we want to copy. And then another space. And then I'll, I'll, I'll read you the place where this needs to go. So you want forward slash, uh -huh. uh, USR, forward slash, local, forward slash, BIN, forward okay. slash. Just one more forward slash, actually, just to be safe, I think. Um, okay, so just to summarize, this means as an administrator, copy file jacktrip into this folder on the computer, usr slash local slash bin. If anyone's interested, usr stands for Unix system resources. Um, so if you press enter there, that will do the copying, but you'll be asked for your password. Okay, it's fine uh, because you're trying to do something as administrator. This is just the same as the password that you use to log into your computer. Um, and as you notice there, when Sam types it, uh, nothing actually comes up. So it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a bit confusing and a bit daunting, but all, all you type there was the same password that you used to log in, right, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So that's installed. I think there's there's one more thing we should do just to be safe, um, because it might mm -hmm. apply to certain people's computers. We need to change the permissions, possibly, uh, on the file that we just moved in order to allow it to be executed. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll again, I'll read out the command that you have to do to do that. So sudo again, mm -hmm. space, uh, ch mod, uh, no, so no space, ch mod. M O D. So yeah. um, I I idiot's guide to this. Um, yeah. Intuitively would want to press backspace there, but actually it was, a, it was the sideways arrow facing backwards. Mm -hmm. to go back and make a mistake. And yeah, go. exactly. You, you just have to use the keyboard arrow keys and the backspace and, and whatever to, to, to get around. It's a bit confusing. Um, okay, Chumod and then space. 755. Space. Uh, and then forward slash USR forward slash local forward slash bin, just the same as it is above. But then after that, forward slash. Jack trip, and then press enter. Okay, so I won't explain what that does because I, I can't remember what chmod stands for, um, but it's basically modifying the permissions. So who's allowed to do what on that file that we just copied, usr slash local slash bin slash jack trip uh, to make it executable so that people can, uh, people can run it. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's all good. Um, I think that you have to open a new terminal window now, actually, to make to make that visible to the terminal. So maybe just press Command T or Command N, and we'll open a new terminal tab or, or window. Sure, command T or Command N. Do you know? Command Command T. I think that, that's easier. So that okay. just opens, opens a new tab inside the same thing. Okay, okay so that's Is that tab versus new or something. Sorry. T and N. Is that T is for tab and N? New, is, new is new is a new window. Uh, yeah. So that would make a, yeah, just like a new internet window uh, in Safari, for example. Um, okay, fine. So, yeah, I think we'll persevere a bit more and then we'll get to the stage where we uh, start to hear audio. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have Jack Trip installed now. And then if you want to go back to Jack Pilot, which is in, in the bottom right of the dock. Um, okay, so we have Jack running now. Okay, if it wasn't running, we would start it by pressing start. But as you see, it's, it's already going. Um, and it's over here. We, um, exactly. And we set the preferences, as we showed in the previous section, to, to what we want them to be. Okay. Now, 
uh, yeah, it's there, but it's greyed out oh, yeah. because you, you can't see the preferences when oh because of this it, no. because it's actually running. Yeah, but that's that's all fine. We don't need to go back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and if you stop sharing screen now and and I'll share screen, I'll just show you what I would do on my side. Okay. Okay, great. Off you go. Okay, so share screen. Desktop. Okay, good. So I would, yeah, you know, I'll just blank this out a bit more. Okay, so I would go into my terminal like this, uh, mm. and remember, I'm the server side. Okay, so I'm the one who has the port forwarding set up on the on the router and so on. And who's, I'm who's Maggie? sorry. Who's Maggie? Maggie is the name of my dog, who's actually departed about five years ago. But it's, you know when you name you name the computer on the network so that it comes up as a certain thing. Mm. Uh, it's useful for certain for certain reasons to have that. So I just put Maggie so that I would remember it rather than a random series of numbers or whatever it is by default. She was a German Ma painter. Maggie's memory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, she was nice, man. She was a really nice dog. Um, so yeah, Maggie is just the name of my computer. So at the moment, if I type LS, that's where I am. But the point of installing Jacktrip is that it doesn't matter where I am in, in the file structure, so I could be anywhere. Um, I can just type Jacktrip like that. Okay, and it's going to run. So again, to do it more slowly, Jack Trip, enter. Okay, now it hasn't really done anything. All it's done is say what it is. Okay, a system for high quality audio network performance, etc. Um, and it's told me how to use it because I haven't used it in the right way. The way that you use a command line program is you pass arguments on the command line. Okay, these things here are called arguments, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But basically. Um, an argument is something with uh, a dash like that. Okay, so this, this thing that I'm highlighting here. Uh, and you can see here that there's a string of different optional arguments. So these are all things that we don't need to set necessarily. Okay, so for example, the number of input and output channels. The default is two, which is what you need for stereo um, communication. Uh, and we'll leave it as two for now because, because why not? Um, something about Q, that seems like it might be important. Um, Would it help for people to think of arguments as being kind of like controls? Or? Yeah, yeah, they're kind of like the, um, they're kind of like, okay, typing the program there and pressing enter just says run the program. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you haven't specified what you want to do with the program. And because it's a command line program, there isn't a thing that you can click on and say, let me do this, let me do that. Okay, so all the actual usage of the program to do a certain thing is, is in the arguments. So that, that it, it sort of expects these things to to be there to, to tell it what to do. Um, so there's all these op optional arguments that we don't need to go through at the moment. Um, and there's help. So it can tell the version number or prints to help. But basically, this is a, a kind of quick cheat sheet for how to do it. The only important things uh, at this stage are the required arguments. Okay, The optional arguments are important too, because all of these things need to be the same between my computer and your computer. Okay, yeah. But the principle is that if we, if we both leave them as default, then they'll, of course they'll be the same anyway. It's just just automatically, okay? Because we'll both have two channels because this two is the default number of channels. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so the only thing we care about really is required arguments, okay? And you see here, this is telling me how to run it in server mode. So that's what I want to do. I want to run Jacktrip in server mode, okay? And mm -hmm. all I need to do, therefore, is type dash s like that, okay? After the command. So I'll, sure. I'll go back to, down to the bottom here. Ls, uh, okay, so I've got Jacktrip. I didn't need to type ls, by the way. It's just kind of, it's literally an impulse that I've developed over many years of using the terminal, typing ls once in a while to see where I am. So I'm going to type chat trip and then dash s. Like that. You're not just okay. going to show off that you work at the Francis Crick. That's well, no, no, I, no, I <laughs> didn't want to say anything. Um, chat trip dash s. Okay. So if I press enter, that's going to start chat trip in server mode on my computer. Okay. Mm. Nothing's really happening, but that's uh, fine. I've got my buffer size set. To one two eight, that's fine. Number of channels is two, using the UDP protocol, which is this fast uh, internet protocol that I spoke about at the start. Okay, yeah. and it's waiting for a connection from uh, the client. Okay, so then I think I suggest that I'll stop sharing. We'll go over to your computer, yeah. and we'll uh, and we'll show what you would do. Okay, sure. All right. So you can start sharing Let's screen. Share the screen then. Okay, you can see that. Uh, yeah, I can. So if you go into your terminal there. Yeah, I think Jack okay, Pilot's already running, isn't it? Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so we have Jack uh, running in the background as evidence by that. So that needs to be happening before you run Jack trip. I should have said, you know, that if you, if you try and run it without, it'll, it'll just give you an error. Okay. Yeah. So now Sam can type Jack trip, but he's going to pass different arguments. Okay. He's going to not pass the dash s because he doesn't want to make a server. He wants to make a client. Okay. Um, and there's something a bit confusing here coming up, or a bit complicated potentially. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. So first of all, just type space and then dash C. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, an argument that says running client mode. But yep. what Jack Trip told us in the help that we just showed, and you can wind the video, video back and uh, see that if you want to, mm -hmm. um, is that when you pass the C option, you need to specify the IP address of the server that you want to connect to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm the person making the server, so I can just make a server but you as the client have to know which server you're going to, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what we've done here, in order to avoid Sam typing my public IP address and everyone seeing it, is we've done something a bit clever in the background to make a kind of nickname for that IP address that is just John, okay? So this hopefully will work, but Sam can just type space and then John there. However, you'd want to imagine a number like- Yeah, 20. exactly, exactly. So, so in, in the case of, of, uh, of the, the viewer, what you would be doing here is that would be whatever number you found right at the start of the video when you were searching for your external IP address, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, in my case, it begins with 88.98. I think that's fine to give that away. Give them quite a bit. Exactly, always But it's, yeah, you, 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 you work out the probability of guessing. <laughs> if someone wants to do that during lockdown, it's fine, you know. If, 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 if someone has to Fair reduce themselves somehow. Um, yeah, so, so basically here, you wouldn't be typing John, you would be typing the actual IP address that you had, um, mm -hmm. or that your friend who's running the server, I suppose, would have yeah. told you, okay? The external IP address of, of that server. Just covered it up here to protect but you. We've covered it up here just so we don't have to go through the video blurring it out all the time. So if you just press enter on that. Enter, great. Yeah. Great, okay. So peer address set to John. And mm -hmm. I think if I go back onto my end, we don't need to sh change the uh, share screen, but suffice it to say uh, on my terminal that a moment ago was, was empty, okay? I now see a message that tells me a client has logged in and actually it tells me your IP address. Um, so it says UD UDP socket receiving in a certain port 4464 um, and it says receive connection for peer. Okay, so that means that your client software has successfully connected to my uh, server software. Okay, yeah. so I think so we'll, we, should, um, we should mention this UDP waiting too long thing isn't anything to be concerned about. This just yeah, exactly. So it's it's it means, it's it's something to do with the data packets taking longer than they should do or something. But I, mm -hmm. from what I can tell, sometimes it happens and it doesn't make too much difference. If it happens all the time, like it was happening a lot when we had that bad distortion earlier on, if you remember, yeah. whereas. Sometimes it doesn't happen too much. Um, my guess here is that maybe it's happening just because none of us is actually supplying any um, mm -hmm. audio data. Possi possibly that's the case, or maybe it's just a, just a sign of a, of a slightly flaky um, internet connection or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah but it's, it's nothing to worry about inherently. That basically, the proof is in the pudding. You know, if the audio comes through nice and clear, then then it does, and if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Um, yeah. And I think we'll wrap this section up there before we get on to actually playing some audio to one another. But just right. to summarize what we did, we started up the Jack process using Jack Pilot. Okay. Before we did that, we set the preferences so that we had a certain uh, audio buffer size of one to eight. Okay. And that has to be the same between both of our computers. So I've set my computer up in the same way as, as Sam's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we started Jack on my side, uh, we started Jack Trip, sorry, on my side, and we started it on Sam's side in the way that we've just shown. Uh, if you want to change any settings, so for example, the likely case is that you might want to tweak this audio buffer size of 128 to 64 or to 256 or whatever. Um, if you want to tweak that, you have to close the Jack Trip server, okay, first of all. Then you need to stop Jack in Jack Pilot. Okay, so why don't we just go through that process actually? So let's say, imagine one to eight is. If you want to share. Or... Sorry. Yeah, exactly. You 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 can you can um you can do it. I I'll, I'll tell you how to do it, and, and we'll just go through the process. Okay. Okay. Um. So you're sharing screen. Is this your screen? This is my screen. 
Oh yeah. Okay. Fine. 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 Okay. okay. So what what you do? So let, let's imagine that we've we've been trying this out and it's not working properly. Okay. We want to get better latency or we want to get better quality or something like that. Now okay. what we're going to do is go in the terminal on the keyboard, type Control C. Control C. And that just sends a, a kill signal to the program, so it stops the program running, and that's totally fine. Then we go into Jack Pilot that we just had open, and we press stop. And then we go to the top left of the screen, and this is done, uh, and open the preferences. Okay, uh, preferences, which has appeared yeah. again now. Yes, exactly, so no, it was no longer grayed out. And then we would go to the buffer size, and we would change that to 64, and then just basically do the reverse of the process that we, that we just did. So you would save that setting, press start, and then go back into the terminal and run Jack Trip again. So I hope that's clearish to, to people. We've had to do yeah a fair bit of that in fine tuning, haven't we? If, if yeah, it, exactly, like we exactly. Back, yeah, yeah. That, tried to get it to a place where it sounded the best. Yeah, exactly. And to emphasise uh, again, that value needs to be the same on both computers that are running the, mm -hmm. uh, that are trying to do the communication. And Jack Trip will tell you via an error message in the terminal if if they're not the same. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay, we'll uh, stop. We'll stop recording there, and we'll be back in a sec. And then just minimize logic. Uh, just to, I'll okay. get it. I'll get it out of the way. I have something else ready. There you go. Okay, so we're back. Uh, so we both have Jack Pilot installed now. Okay, and what we're going to do is just show the process of first starting the server with some parameters that we've chosen that seem to work well. Um, starting the client on Sam's side. Then we'll come back to my side again. I'll show you the, the routing settings or the patch settings that I have in Jack Pilot in order to get the correct inputs to the correct outputs. And then we'll do the same thing on Sam's end. Okay. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to hear what we hear as well, because we're doing something in the background with, with logic. Okay. So if I start sharing the screen, first of all, uh, this will cause Sam to stop sharing. That's fine. Uh, okay. Good. So. On my end here, I'm just in the in the terminal. I'm just pressing enter a few times to clear the screen, uh, and I'm going to type the following command: Jack trip, trip, Jack trip, uh, s. So server that means, and then we've just been playing around a bit, and this Q parameter, which is something to do with the higher it is, it might give you a bit more latency, but you'll have you'll be less likely to get glitches happening. That's my basic understanding of it anyway. I didn't really understand that. Can you say that again? Yeah, so, so Q is just another argument that we can pass. It's a, something called the Q length. You can read about it in the Jack Trip documentation. I don't completely understand it, but what I think it means is that if you set a higher value than the default, which is four, then you will slightly increase the latency, but you'll have less chance of having glitches because of data not arriving at the correct time. Okay. okay. So, so let Slightly worse, but 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 because we're trying to improve the yeah exactly we're just trying to optimize things a bit and have it to be as stable as we as we can while still being low latency and so this is the kind of thing that you might have to play with as as we discussed about the um, we discussed that about the buffer size as well in the previous section you might just the very very simplest thing that they could write in to get a sound to begin with yeah it's a good good question the simplest thing they could do is just that Jack trip s and that would work and yeah, and exactly. on your end you would do Jack trip dash C and then my IP address, those things would work. Okay, yep. but I'm going to go to this and then the, the next argument is dash N and one. So again, this is an attempt to reduce the amount of data that needs to be sent in order to avoid glitches and stuff. Um, so this is kind of like a second stage, isn't it? So the first stage. Yeah, was yeah, the, yeah, was yeah, exactly. First of all, we installed Jack trip and we showed how to connect the server to the client. Now I'm just going through some particular settings that we've that we that we've decided to use, um, just because, like for example, this afternoon Sam's internet download speed is a bit slow uh, compared to what it was yesterday. Okay, so we're trying to compensate for that a little bit and, and try to reduce the data requirements. But as I say, I could just do that. Okay, but I'm going to do this instead. So N1 means it's going to send one channel. Okay, so instead of setting two channels, which is what you would do for stereo, I'm just going to send one. That's okay because I'm just playing an electric bass. So it's not a stereo instrument, it's only a mono instrument. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see in a, in a few minutes how Sam gets that on his end to appear in both of his headphones as opposed to just one of them. Okay. Uh, but that, again, that should reduce the requirement for data um, bandwidth from, in, in comparison to a stereo signal. 
Okay, so I'm going to start the server by pressing enter like that, and then we, I'll stop sharing screen, Sam can share screen and show you him starting the client with the same parameters. Okay, so I'll share the screen now. You see that? Yep, I see that. Okay. So open, open so, the terminal there. Yep, that's... Chat pilot's fine as it is. I'm trying to close that down there because... Yeah. Okay, chat pilot is on, great. Ignore the thing that was on the screen a second ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so here's the terminal. And as you see, we have Jack running up already because the Jack Pilot thing has stopped on the button. So that means it's, it's been started. So Sammy is going to type something similar to what he typed in the previous section. Uh, it's Jack Trip space C. Oh, sorry, I should have space. Uh, <laughs> uh, dash C, yeah? Yeah, Dash C, sorry. Yeah. That means on the uh, client. That would yeah, be enough. As a starting phase, but then we're going to add the same arguments. Yeah, yeah, you. yeah, exactly. So, so it wouldn't quite be enough because the the default situation would be that somebody would type an IP address here. Okay, so oh, they would cool. type the IP address of the server. Um, but instead, we are going to type John because we configured that as a as a sign, kind of um, nickname for my IP address. Instead so, of all the numbers, we've changed it to that. But we yeah, exactly, it. exactly. Yeah. But for the for the viewer of this uh, movie, unless you, unless you know how to do that. Don't worry, just use the external IP address that you that you got in the earlier sections. Okay. So that but would be it, enough. It would be enough at this stage, right? That would be enough at this stage if I had just typed Jack Trip dash S on my end. That would be like okay. everything would be default and it would be fine. Uh, but because I've added some different settings, you need to type space. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then dash Q. Dash Q. Space six. Just like I did. That's good. And then dash N space one. So again, that's a single channel thing. And this Q parameter, the default is six, but we, no, the default is four, but we've made it six to try and just get a bit more reliability in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you press enter there, that should connect on my end. Now you stop sharing the screen and I will share screen. Okay. So in fact, I can just kick you off. That's fine. I think I just did that. Yeah. Okay. So on my end, as if by magic, Sam has, has shown up. So it says receive connection for peer. That's because Sam connected to me. Okay. So then, next time I look in Jack Pilot, which is this thing here, things are going to look a bit uh, different. Okay, uh, so there is routing here, and that again, this is like a kind of virtual patch bay where you connect inputs to outputs with. Um, that's that opened up when you press routing, right? That, yeah, I pressed routing, and that came up. Okay, so. Send ports are ports that send audio. Receive ports are ports that receive audio. Okay, so for example, the receive ports might be, um, they might be connected to headphones. For example, my, my interface is connected to my big headphones, these ones. Um, and you can see here that if you highlight a certain thing, you get a red thing over here. So I'm just going to expand all of this because there's not many to, to see. Uh -huh. Okay, and what I'm showing you here, when you highlight something on the left hand side, okay, uh, it tells you in red what it's connected to on the right hand side. So this tells me that capture one, which is input number one of my audio interface, is connected to the send of Jack Trip. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. Apart from that, my base is plugged into input two of the audio interface. Okay, and if I select capture two here, you can see that that isn't connected to Jack Trip. Okay, so what I need to do is highlight that there, and then I'm going to double click on send one, and that's going to mean that my base from capture two is being sent on Jack Trip. In fact, I can select capture one and double click here to deselect that. What so is in capture one? Nothing. Capture one is empty. Yeah, it's just a mic socket on my interface that I'm not using. Um, okay. But obviously, I could if I wanted to. I could just send both of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there we have capture two. And it tells you here, and by the fact that this is size of red, that capture two, the DI socket on my interface to which my base is connected, um, has been virtually routed via this manager to the Jack Trip send. So that means it's going to be sent to Sam. On the other hand, I can highlight receive on the left hand side here. And this means what Sam is sending me. So remember, we're only sending each other uh, one channel. Okay, so it's not a stereo thing going on. I'm just receiving one channel from Sam. At the moment, that is routed to playback one. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means the left side of my audio interface. So only one headphone is going to be making sound when Sam plays uh, at the moment. Yeah. What I need to do to hear in both is analogous to what I did before. I leave, I leave this one highlighted, receive one, and I double click on playback two. Okay, so now I see that both of them are highlighted, and that means that the single channel of audio that Sam is sending to me via Jack Trip 
is going to be played through both outputs of my audio interface, playback one and playback two. Left and right headphones. And left and right headphones, that's what it means, yeah, exactly. So I'll stop sharing screen, and then we can go back to Sam sharing screen, and Sam will show you. Uh, Are they still connected? Or? Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. so if yeah. I highlight it there, you can, you can see oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, quite a sort of weird little interface, this. It depends on what's highlighted and what gets to book it, and it's really weird, but it, it does work. Um, okay. okay, so I'll stop sharing. And if you can start sharing again, Sam. Yes, of course. Okay, so that should be sharing now. Okay, good. And then if you open up Jack Pilot, yeah, the, okay. the, the routing thing that I just yeah. showed. Pilot, yeah. Yeah, and click routing there. I'm going to do similar, similar things. You want right? to do a similar thing, yeah. So what we need to do here is we don't need to worry about system uh, for mm -hmm. the sends because that's already uh, configured. So if mm -hmm. you, maybe you can just briefly open that system, actually. Uh, click capture one. Yeah, and you see in red it's highlighted. So capture one, which is what Sam's uh, keyboard is plugged into, right, um, yeah. is going to Jack Trip. So I'm, he's going to send that signal to me. So if you close system there, mm -hmm. the more important thing on Sam's end is in this bit here. So if you open Jack Trip yeah. and you highlight receive one, and then if you open the system uh, menu on the right, okay. So at the moment, what this means is that the Jack Trip receive channel is being sent to output one. Of Sam's interface. Remember, his, his Sapphire interface has eight channels here, and it's been sent to only uh, number one of them. Now, we're going to do something here that enables us to record into logic. Okay. Specifically, uh, Sam, if you just open the Sapphire mixer, actually. First of all, can, um, so, so this, yeah, what the signal I'm getting at the moment is yeah. this am I getting a mono signal or a. Or a so am I getting two headphones? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. So before we do anything, yeah, mm. let's you, let's connect you to playback two. So yeah. highlight receive one, double click playback two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, as it stands, that's so that's basically the corresponding thing to what I did on my end. Yeah. Sam makes it so that my signal goes to both of his headphones. Thanks for thanks for that. That's good. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And so the next thing has to do with Sam's Sapphire uh, audio interface. So if you open the Sapphire mixer now. Mm -hmm. Like which is terrifying it is it's completely terrifying <laughs> but <laughs> every mixer is different some of them might be simpler than this mine is yeah. too simple in the sense that it can't do what we're about to do here okay mm. because if you look at the loopback section of this mixer sam so just maybe hover your cursor over that you uh, mean down, down in the middle yeah yeah so we'll just read here this says daw3 to loopback one daw4 to loopback two now in the mixer DAW stands for digital, yeah, digital audio workstation. Um, and those are the names for the eight outputs. So there's actually DAW one through to DAW eight. Those are the eight outputs uh, that the computer, yes, yeah, because yeah, it has eight outputs, that the computer is sending to the audio interface. Now, loopback is a nice feature on Sam's interface, which means that if he sends audio here to DAW three and to DAW four, mm -hmm those two channels will be looped back into one of the inputs of the interface. And in fact, they will go to inputs 15 and 16. Okay. Mm. So we have three, uh, output three is going to end up going back into what appears as uh, input 15 and 16, uh, or input 15 in logic anyway, it appears as that. Um, and DAW4 is going into loop back two, and that's going to go in, that's going to appear as input 16 in logic. Right. I'd have found that through trial and error, didn't we? we, we yeah, we, we yeah, we got really stuck and we found it out by trial and error because as, as Sam says, this mixer is pretty scary looking. <laughs> um, but every interface has some documentation for it, and if we had spent enough time reading that, we probably would have been yeah. able to figure it out, you know, quicker. We can do it, we can do it. Yes, ex exactly. Yes, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is this is good because at the moment this has two channels being looped back. But remember I'm only sending Sam one channel, so we're not going to actually make use of all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, we can leave that setting as it is. Just suffice to say, if we want things to loop back into the inputs of the interface, we need to send them to channel three and four. So with that in mind, let's go back into Jack Pilot. Okay. Might be worth pointing out that if, if all yeah. people want to do is rehearse with each other, play yeah. duet, then they're then already they've done. already done everything yeah. they need. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I, exactly, yeah. You, you, basically, me and Sam can already hear each other. 
playing. Okay. Uh, we're not yet recording into Logic, so you won't be able to hear it on the, as a viewer, but me and Sam can play, can play to each other right now just with the settings that we already have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, so back into Jack Pilot. Okay, and so remember I said that DAW3 and DAW4 are going to loop back, and what that means is that with the Jack trip receive highlighted on the left, Sam needs to double click on playback three and playback four. I mean, he only, only has to do one of them really, but we may as well do both, uh, just for simplicity. So that means that as well as going into Sam's earphones, uh, which is playback one and two, okay, they're going into playback three and four, and then we've told the Sapphire mixer to loop those outputs back in turn into inputs. Okay, yeah. so, so that's can... that's a bit of a tricky thing. There are other ways to do this, I think. So on my end, I might have to use something like Soundflower or a piece of software that's actually called Loopback that's similar, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of way to achieve this without your interface necessarily supporting it in. Uh, in this automatic way, okay? Uh, so that'd be different for everybody, really. I did have a kind of weird hacky method where I literally plugged one of my outputs on the interface back into an input, okay? Um, possibly that could work, I think, uh, and it seemed to work, but on the other hand, it might cause feedback and stuff. So, in, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of um, a bit up in the air, really. But yeah, I would say if you don't have an interface that supports this loopback feature, look into something like Soundflower or something like the loopback software. Um, so you're using Soundflower and I'm using loopback. I'm using Soundflower, yeah, but uh, I prefer not to use it because it seems to add a bit more latency to the recording and okay. one might have to compensate for that later on, which makes it a bit more tricky. It's, it's perfectly doable. Um, okay, so that, uh, that virtual patch bay that we have there is configured in the correct way now, okay, in the sense that my base signal on receive one is going to these four uh, outputs of Sam's interface. Yeah. Okay. One and two in the headphones, three and four are going to Logic. Yeah, exactly. So now you can go into Logic, I think. Mm -hmm. Which actually is recording already. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully yeah. this uh, hopefully this works. Yeah. No, it stopped. Oh no, it's just the it's just the jerky screen. <laughs> okay, fine. So let's show how this is configured. So you have um, audio three selected there. That's the um, track that the bass is going to go on to. And it, say, and it says in 15, if you just highlight that with the cursor on the, on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, as I said earlier on, is input 15. And that is the one that is kind of virtual input, which is actually the looped back output number three from the uh, interface, okay? We're actually not using four, are we? Sorry, so 16. We're not, we're not using four yet, but we, we could do either one. The reason we have both of them is in case we want to do something in stereo, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be five seconds because I've got some uh, breaded fish in the oven that I need to switch off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sainsbury's breaded cod. I've just, got, I've just got two of them <laughs> for my dinner because uh, I haven't been to the shop uh, for a while. Okay, so yeah, fine. So if I play some bass now, this will be the first thing being played via the real time audio uh, connection that the viewers can hear, I think. Um, Okay, so you can see that's recording in, in Logic uh, as we expected, because my signal is going into my audio interface, into Jack Trip, over the internet to Sam's Jack Trip software, and then we set up the routing in such a way that it goes into input three and input four uh, of his audio interface. That loops back into input uh, 16, okay, sorry, it goes to output three and four of the audio interface. They look back, loop back into uh, input 15 and 16, and then Logic is using input 15 or 16 to record on, okay? As well, Sam could hear that in your headphones, couldn't you, Sam? Yeah. Because uh, the signal is also going to output one and two of his interface, which is just the plain headphone signal that he uh, is, is plugged into, okay? 
Mm. So do, do you think that's pretty, that's as clear as it can be given that it's quite complicated, right? Do you think? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then if Sam highlights audio one, you might, you might find when you go back through it that you that you know it wouldn't be the end of the world if you go through it and you think a thing is said unclearly just to kind of overdub yourself saying yeah 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 I might do that it depends how much I can be bothered but I, I, yeah, I, might, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might do that um, if if you had like audio one uh, yeah in, in logic mm -hmm. and we should see that that is connected to input one okay so that's just Sam's piano going into the um, going into the thing right into the interface so. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that was in time. I mean, that's the whole point. Uh, so I think that's that's basically it, really. Um, in the in that we have um, communication between the two, we can both hear what's going on. I can hear you in, in two channels. You can hear me in two channels, and we're recording the whole thing onto Logic. Um, one thing that Sam pointed out that is very um, very good to point out actually is that the ideal situation to record this. Uh, to record something properly sort of as live would be for me to be recording on my end as well that's right sam yeah mm -hmm. yeah so, so the reason for that is what if you just want to explain that uh well just because uh sometimes the sound that comes uh through jack trip can be a little jittery or glitchy uh but yeah. it's in time and yeah. so the sound that you're recording of yourself is going to be is going to be good and the sounds yeah. that i'll be recording of myself will be Will, yeah. be, will be good. So if we put those things uh, together again later, we have the yeah. advantage of being able to play in time and also exactly. the advantage. Of the exactly. Yeah. I, I, exactly. So I think it's it's one of those things that it basically depends on how good of an internet connection the people involved are, are blessed with, right? So I can imagine one scenario in which if, if both people, I, if someone in my building, for example, who has the similarly fast internet that that I have, hopefully in that case we would have really trouble free passing of audio between us. Yeah. We might have zero glitches whatsoever, and then we might be happy to just record into a single logic session on one end, right? And then manipulate the tracks afterwards. On the other hand, given that, um, as I said, uh, for every reason, some download speed is a bit lower this afternoon than it was yesterday, uh, we sometimes have one or two glitches um, in, the, in the audio that I send to Sam, right? Uh, and so I could be running logic and doing a similar thing to what Sam's doing, and then, yeah, as Sam said correctly, my, my bass would sound good on my recording with no glitches. Sam's piano would sound good on his recording with no glitches. And we can just combine them together. And still... I guess the possible downside to, um, to live streaming with this. Like, you'd need an understanding audience. In case you have a, uh... Yeah, I suppose you would, yeah. Again, depending how bad it is for you, you know? Like, d d it depends what the internet's like, you know? Uh, yesterday could... was pretty clear, though, wasn't it? Yesterday was really clear. And to be honest, it could be that, you know, perhaps if you phoned up Sky, who's your broadband provider, and you just said, please, can you upgrade me to um, a slightly better package, a cheap, I'm a professional musician and I need to <laughs> need to yeah. do live streams or whatever, you know, perhaps they would do that. And then I think in that case that you can get to a situation where it should be almost trouble free. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It seems to change quite a lot day to day as well, doesn't it? Like the, the mustache yeah. yesterday. A yeah, impressive. exactly, exactly. And it would depend if someone else in your house is streaming Netflix or four other people are streaming Netflix, then maybe that would be it's troublesome true. as well. Um, but but the, not too bad either. Like, I think it's yeah. the sort of thing I feel like, yeah, you, you'd need to think about who you were facing, yeah, uh, wise. If it's yeah. an understanding crowd that uh, who were excited by the prospect of hearing the interaction, yeah, um, then that would be absolutely fine yeah exactly. most circumstances of any crowd it would be fine with because the audio quality can be can be really fine really decent yeah, yeah exactly. then you always have the luck of the draw you always have the chance that maybe you'd have a a, a, a bad luck experience and you don't yeah, want to be exactly yeah, yeah. So, exactly so the, the thing to do would be to sort of test your internet speed do some trials with this with with a mate test the um test out different settings for the jack trip server and the client uh different buffer sizes, as we discussed already, um, see what works. And then if you want to hopefully be reasonably well guaranteed that the same thing will happen next time, you would run the speed test on Google again, wouldn't you? You know, And you'd be like, right, is my download speed and my upload speed the same as it was that other day when things were sounding OK? You know, And then yeah. you could be hopefully quite confident that you get a similar level of quality. In terms of, of audio quality, in terms of fidelity and that sort of thing, 
the audio quality when it's um, if it comes through cleanly is actually really really good because mm. Jack Drip is sending uncompressed audio and that's one of the reasons again why it's so fast it's not for example converting it to mp3 or anything like that um, and then sending it it's just sending basically raw audio in whatever uh, bit rate you specify right. you know um, so assuming it all gets there the data is is really high quality and, and the bass should sound more or less as good on Sam's end as it does on on mine um, but yeah. as we said it's all slightly down to the look of the draw if you have dodgy internet because Jack Trip is going to be quite unforgiving of that it's not going to compensate for that and if the internet loses some data packets or sends them in the wrong order or something like that Jack Trip on either end isn't going to know about that so you're just going to get a little glitch in the audio yeah, yeah. that's basically, basically the picture most of the time um, they get something too bad but yeah it's, yes exa yeah. exactly yeah and, and, the, and the whole point really is that the glitches are the price you pay for not having any error checking on the communication yeah mm -hmm. because if you wanted to eliminate glitches completely you either need really perfect internet which is possible of course um, mm -hmm. or you would need to introduce some error correction into the transmission but that would add latency so you would have something that was never glitching but was always latent i.e always behind like, like zoom is doesn't really glitch but it's always has latency this way we're sacrificing we're, we're kind of you know you're living a bit dangerously by just having zero error correction on the transmission but the amazing benefit that you get and something that's really been fantastic for us so far anyway is that the latency is, is very low and almost unnoticeable right yeah which is pretty amazing yes exactly um, so go ahead yeah should we play something yeah i think let's conclude the section by just doing that scale fragments exercise that we were doing before and then okay. maybe we can we can restart the video and just play something a bit more involved and then we'll do a, a bit more further discussion of the of the possibilities at the end okay but okay. for now um yeah we'll show you something that we were trying the other day which is i play a scale fragment up one to five for example and and sam plays a scale fragment down and then okay. we both just wait an arbitrary length of time and sam plays a scale fragment then i play one in response in time then okay. i wait an arbitrary amount of time i play a scale fragment sam plays one the reason for the waiting time is to stop either of us from getting into our own inherent sort of time feel Mm -hmm. which should be sort of cheating if you see what i mean the idea here is that using the close to real time audio um sam should be able to place his scale fragment okay after mining the correct rhythmic place okay so i'll play uh, something in, in c going from one to five and you just go down again okay and then wait and then you do something similar <laughs> <laughs> great good yeah okay <laughs> so i think that's good enough and hopefully when we get back to that on the recording it will um those scale fragments will be reasonably well in time okay and that's a good a good signal that latency is low enough and um, that we can continue each other's rhythmic rhythmic uh, pulses sort of um okay cool so we'll stop that bit of the recording there and then we'll be back with a, maybe another example and some conclusions at the end okay okay so we're back i've had my dinner and we're gonna uh, just play a little bit of a tune we'll play i should lose you i suppose and everything is as it was at the end of the previous section okay so we just have the channels in logic assigned to the correct uh, inputs uh, and yeah so one thing to mention is that at the moment because we're talking over zoom we can't count in verbally right the yeah. solution to that would be basically if, if you if you watch the video and understand it and and watch it again you know it will become clear how to also add a microphone into the mix so you could either use your internal microphone perhaps of the computer um, making an aggregate device with your audio interface or you could plug a microphone into your audio interface and use that for communication either way the idea would be to send the verbals over jack trip as well so that they're real time okay there was something funny that happened yesterday when me and sam tried to count in didn't we via zoom <laughs> And then immediately played out of time. <laughs> yeah, let's let's try it now. Yeah, we'll, we'll just just to demonstrate. Well, I need to press I need, I need to press record for that, wouldn't I? Um, yes, you would. Yeah. Well, fuck it. It doesn't matter. Well, let's let's good. let's not bother. Um, so, <clears throat> okay. So yeah. So for that reason, for simplicity at the moment, we're just talking over Zoom. We could talk over the real time 
thing without any any issue really um but for that reason we'll count in by some you know i don't know playing for for notes of g which is the first uh, chord or whatever you want to do Sam. i'll just start the groove off yeah okay okay great so i press record <laughs> Um. I don't know. So, just to um, just to yeah. So to discuss. So it feels to me very slightly laggy. There's, there's zero glitches, right? Mm -hmm. do, do you agree? Like, there's there's no glitches. I didn't really hear any glitches. Yeah. Which was... Yeah. So, so that's a sign that we're we're being a bit conservative, possibly with the. Um, Mm -hmm. settings and we could try and push for a little bit even lower latency um yeah. at the cost of one or two glitches here and there okay yeah so i don't know i'm, I'm tempted man just to actually try that so we'll just we'll just do an edit point and then we'll just try playing again and see if, if it feels okay. different okay so we're back uh we just had a little play uh through some of uh, that tune that we did, I've already forgotten. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so basically we, we were uh, off camera for a little bit, playing with the settings of uh, Jack Trip. And we did that in two ways. The, the reason being that we felt there was just a little tiny bit of latency that was detectable when we were playing there. And we were using very slightly more latent settings than we had yesterday. Um, all that, all that being said, it was, it was uh, perfectly fine to play actually. Uh, just a kind of micro difference that I noticed after I listened to the recording. Um, the time, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Ex exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a professional. And then uh, the the ways that we attacked that were to um, basically we, we we had two things. So we changed the uh, Jack Trip setting on in the terminal to Q4 instead of Q6. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we tried that, which should reduce the latency at the cost of um, some switching. And then the other thing we did was we stopped the Jack Pilot uh, thing running. So we went went into Jack Pilot, press stop. We went into the preferences, um, and we tried changing the buffer size to sixty four rather than one twenty eight, and then starting everything mm -hmm. back up again. Okay. So both of those things we found that they did decrease the latency, but they introduced more glitching than we were happy to to have. Okay. And then yeah. Sam ran another speed test on his end his download speed is limited to about 10 or 15 megabits per second, which is a lot, lot lower than it was yesterday, basically. Yeah. So sort it out, Sky. Um, but that's, <laughs> that's good. 
when we're not getting us, there, yeah exactly, exactly I suppose not. it's good for us to have done that test because that basically shows that when one person has that download speed as a as a cap and that is the bottleneck in this situation because my upload speed is quite fast um and I guess these are the sorts of when one person has that, then that's the kind of settings that you can get away with. Sorry for that, what are you going to say? Yeah. So then I guess these are the sorts of things people have to play around with. Themselves. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Basically, you want you want to see how good how good a settings you can do in terms of low latency without glitching, um, low buffer size, etc. Like, like you were saying, so it's you've yeah. got um, what's it? You've got a choice of sixty four and, and one. Yeah, eight. exactly. And we got as low as, as thirty two the other day, but we had a bit of glitching then, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So, and then so the queue as well, whatever that is, the, that seems to yeah, change. exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That seems to make a difference too, and that's explained in the documentation of Jack a bit. But suffice to say, um, if you are finding that one twenty eight buffer size is as low as you can get, then it may be that somebody's download or somebody's upload is limited to ten megabits per second and no more, for example. And if you're in that ballpark in terms of the slowest connection, then you might struggle to get to get lower. But that's mm -hmm. that's fine, really, because we know that when it was uh, faster yesterday, we got lower. Um, yeah. So you know, and, and and that being said, I think the recording is more or less in time. It's just a little bit. I think it's right. Yeah. Slightly lazy feeling. Could, could, have been, could have been maybe marginally better. But we're talking something subtle. I think yeah, one of the exactly. things I found interesting about this when I read up on it is, it's the conversation about uh, just the fact that we have latency in real life. Mm. Um, so if you're in a big hall and you're on the other side of a hall from someone else, you're going to have a fair bit of latency there. Uh, orchestras playing have a lot of a lot of latency issues. That's why they tend to watch. <laughs> well, that's why they watch a conductor conducting, isn't it? Because yes, all of them exactly. become slightly different places, and they know not yeah. to trust their, their ears because of the, the the sound out front will be right because mm. the sound conductor mm. is mm. getting yeah. from. Them. But I think this this twenty to thirty millisecond. Um, window we're talking about is akin to standing about nine meters apart so you can get yeah. within that it's pretty similar exactly if you're in there then you're kind of happy aren't you i think i think mm. you i think you would be happy with that so yeah i think i think i think it's absolutely fine i think we're just on the edge of what's detectable at the moment um mm. and to make it really solid we would try to ensure that we had a download speed of more like 30 40 megabits per second um mm. and uh, the lowest upload speed to be in the ballpark of 15 to 20 maybe um, yeah. and then we would be able to reduce the buffer size and really, really have it completely um, trouble free. But yeah, it already it's good. And as Sam says, a bit of latency is realistic. It's just as if we're playing a bit further away from each other than we would be. Um, yeah, it's very workable, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's perfect. Um, okay, so we want to get onto a bit of discussion about streaming now. Um, yes, yeah. oh, sorry, I forgot. So, so just, before, yeah, just before we get into that, I just want to have a bit of the video. I'm going to wave my arms around so hopefully I see this when I'm editing it. A bit of the video where I basically just say, now that you've installed all these softwares, what happens if you restart your computer, start it back up again, what do you do to reinstate the situation that we've got to here? Yeah. Can I just double check with you there? Yeah. So, so I, I, just to be annoying, I think the plural of software is software still. I think, yeah, I think <laughs> you're absolutely right, actually. Yeah. But it, isn't it one of those things where saying softwares, it somehow sounds learned? Like, when you, you know when people say musics? Oh, right, yeah, okay. We'll you know? Say. I, I'm not going to pretend that that's what I was going for, but, but that's my retrospective justification <laughs> of it. Um, I'm just going to open the, open the blinds a bit. Okay. So, it's intense in me now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's getting, getting too dark. Um, okay. So here's, here's the bit where I give the really quick summary of what you need to do to get this working next time. So now you've installed all the software, it's fine. Um, what you need to do if you start your computer from scratch is, one, both people open Jack Pilot. Two, they set the preferences so that they have the same sample rate and the same buffer size. The number of inputs and outputs is specific to their audio interface, so that's fine. Number three, they start Jack Pilot. Okay. Number four, they go into the terminal. The person who is on the server end uh, does the Jack Trip dash S thing to create the server with whatever arguments they, uh, they might have chosen uh, mm -hmm. or none. And then number five, the person on the other end does the Jack Trip dash C with the IP address after that, and then whatever other options there might be to, it, to connect to the server. So essentially that's all that has to happen. And then a bit of fiddling around potentially with the, the inputs and outputs in Jack Trip, as we've shown already in the video. But that, that's more or less all you have to do. The only other thing that might slow you down is that, as I'm gonna do, you might have closed off the port forwarding on the router, as we discussed in the first section. So you might need to open that before you start your live session, whatever it is. But that's basically it. So it's a really quick process if you can understand what's going on um, and what we've been telling you, 
it's a really quick process to, to get it back up ready again. Yeah. Even if this video is probably amounted to several hours, it's a quick process. Yes, yeah, so exactly. You know, but we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to deal with it, guys, all right? <laughs> so, okay, so now... Is, 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 you know, it's just a couple of guys working it out, isn't it? So, yes, exactly, yeah. So it's not, it's not going to be very slick. But the, I think the benefit of that is that hopefully we're talking about it as quickly as people are able to think about it, you know? So hopefully it, it will give them time to let it sink in because it's the kind of thing that you can't really do without understanding it a little bit. I think that's why we're trying to get it across. Yeah, and some of those things like using the terminal could seem quite scary. So exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, bloody yeah. to do. Exactly. So um, okay, so Sam, you've been doing some live stream concerts, and obviously something that has uh, occurred to you very immediately is could you use, use this for live streaming? So you're going to share a screen and show us a few things. Right? Yeah. Well, I suppose um, live streaming is something that's of interest to a lot of people right now. So I imagine people watching this, if they've got this far, <laughs> uh, will be uh, wondering whether it's possible. Um, and I'd say, yes, it is. But with, with the caveat we had earlier in that, you know, you, you are at the mercy of, of, of the internet connection you have. So you'd have to work on, on those things. And maybe you'd want to practice this a bit before actually going for it, because it would be a shame to have a paying audience watch something which you don't feel was up to up to standard um but there are lots of lots of ways you could feed the signal through to a live stream uh using uh, obs which is open broadcasting software there are other ways as well uh, but maybe if i share my screen okay can you see that Great. Okay. So this is what OBS looks like. Now, the, uh, if you're in, for example, you, could, you can um, live stream to all sorts of places. You could live stream to YouTube, live stream to Vimeo, and there are all sorts of advantages and disadvantages to the various places you can do it to, Twitch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I've done mine so far to Facebook, so that seems like a, a decent example to go with. Uh, now, if you were just uh, recording yourself on your phone to Facebook, you could just press live. But if you want to do anything a little more complex, like feed the signal through from a uh, from multiple mics let's say or, or or something along those lines then you'd probably want to use some kind of uh, broadcasting uh, software uh, similarly if you want to do something interesting with the screens you, in, in something like OBS you can have different screens you could have you know the piano keys on one side and the and the person playing on the other and a logo at the bottom any any of those sorts of things um, that people might might be interested in are, are possible with OBS so it's worth looking into for that reason um, one of the things that you'd want to do is, so the, so the screen that would, would come up would be something like this, if I can get it, get it running. So I have a, uh, a private group, uh, sorry, let me just do this. Um, so I have a private group uh, that I used to practice in. Um, so that would be a good place to use. You might want to, because this is getting very slow because of the internet, you might want to cut some of this down. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Uh, fine, you bastard. Okay, so right now I'm in a private group that I used to, to practice uh, live streaming in. So no one can see this, or rather John can see this at the moment, but, but, but no one else. Um, so what you do first is, is click live video. It's so slow. It, yeah, it, that's that download speed, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to spend very long on this, I'm just going to show where to put yeah, stuff yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Of course. I'm not going to actually do a live stream. <laughs> yeah, it was, seems like it was a struggle at the moment to manage it. Do you ever eat that bit of, a, of an orange, like the skin, the pit, the inside of the skin? No, I never. Quite, quite nice. Okay, so I might carry on speaking from here. You can cut yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Uh, once you press that button and you're in here, uh, you see there are all these options down here. So use camera, use paired encoder, these are all things that you could do. 
Um, if you want to use OBS, you have to use stream key. So you press that. Um, it gives you the stream key down here. So you copy that, take it across to OBS. Uh, in uh, settings, you press that. Uh, go to stream. You've got the stream key here. So you delete whatever is currently in there. And you put in your new one. Okay, save that. Great. Okay, so now, whenever you press start streaming, if I were to press start streaming now, that would appear in Facebook and I could just press go live and everything that's happening in OBS would be going live now. Um, inside OBS, you can, you can deal with the sound and the picture. Uh, so if I wanted to, I've already added an audio here. If I wanted to add um, a picture, let's say, the window capture for now, so just what's happening in the room. Um, I could, or maybe if I, even if I did video, video capture for now, that should just film me. Mm. So I'll press that. Uh, we'll select the, the, the built-in camera for now. That's what I look like. Press that. Okay, so that would, is what the image that would be sent out. Uh, and then audio input. Um, open this up. At the moment, I've got this coming from something called Loopback. Uh, you, can, you can suss this out for your for yourself, you could send send the audio from all sorts of different places, but I've I've yeah. chosen to do it through Loopback using this. You see, I have all these other options, including Jack Router, uh, Sapphire, the built-in microphone on the computer. So you can you can pick from those. Yeah. Now, uh, by using Loopback, uh, what I've done is I've got um, again. Don't stress too much about this. You could do this in 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 your own way, but this is just yeah. the way that I've chosen to do this. But using Loopback, I've sent uh, the signal from channel one uh, to the left and the right um, headphone, left and the, the both kind of stereo um, channels. So that's your piano, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's, my, that's the keyboard. And then, uh, as we were talking about earlier, we've sent, um, by, by routing from the output back into um, a couple of inputs, yeah. uh, we've uh, taken John's bass playing and stuck that into channels 15 and 16. So all I've done is I've connected all of these in. Uh, so I have one of John's going to the right, one of John's going to the left, and I've got one of mine going to the left, one of mine going to the right. Yeah. Uh, so that's all sent to there, loop back, mixes them together, and then all I'd need to do is, is have that set in here. And then you'll notice that if I play, the sound comes up, and if John plays, uh, okay, you can, see, you can see that happening there. So now at this point we've got both of our both of our um, signals coming through, and we've got an image uh, that we could send out. You could do all sorts of things with image. Uh, we could we could send pictures of both of us. We could we could do there's a whole range, and you can actually apply loads of effects to them and things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that lots of people find really useful with this is having an image in preparation for the gig that have for the first for ten minutes or twenty minutes beforehand. There may be some music going on in the background, let's say, yeah, yeah. Um, that is just letting people know that it's about to happen. And then when you want it to actually start, you'd just uh, you'd have the image that you're going to do the gig with set up here. That the, the image that is is letting everyone know that the gig is going to happen would already be in program by then. And you'd have set up in preview the image for the rest of it. And then as soon as you want to go, you just press transition and everything shifts across and you're ready to start. Hmm. Um, so that's kind of how you do that. That's basically. really interesting, actually. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So should we, we should we do a quick um? Should we try and do a little live stream to that private group? Edit point. We'll just edit something here, if we if it doesn't work. But okay. yeah, let's just try. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's going to attack your computer. Let's just try a little mini live stream of uh, the head of something, just okay. to see how how well it is. Because we haven't actually successfully done that yet, have we? With all the okay. sound working. Here we go then. So shall we start now? Yeah. Let's if do, we um, minute, this is this is kind of how we do it. So yeah, uh, I've I've set up the stream queue already, so it's ready to ready to stream. I'd need to put this image onto program. So if I don't do that. Uh, everything in program is what's being sent to the stream. Preview is just setting up for the next screen. Mm -hmm. So that's now ready to go. So I just press start streaming. And now it's sending the signal across to, to Facebook, which we have here. So connecting live video, at some point, uh, that image should show up. Uh, my computer's struggling a little at the moment, but um, but it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, some settings whilst that's happening, just watch out over here on the left. Uh, so you have share in a group, Sam Leaks uh, live streams. Uh, make sure that you've got it set to the group you want to send it to, otherwise you might accidentally send it to all of your friends or to some other group. So just make sure that's all kind of set up right. If you wanted to have a title or anything like that, then, then you can set that up in there as well.
So is, is it struggling to connect to the live video, do you think? Mm. Oh no, it just started working. Okay. So you can see now that the, the image has appeared down here in the right-hand corner because it's, because it's ready to go live. Uh, it looks a little jittery, but don't worry. The actual image going out is much, is much better than that, and you'll see that uh, um, in the eventual video. We'll share some, some of that footage. Uh, so don't be stressed too much by the fact it looks like it's a disaster down there. Um, so we press go live, and it will start sending um, what's going on in OBS out to that Facebook group. Okay, so yeah. So, um... Depending on the computer that you have, it may be that um, having Zoom on it at the same time as trying to stream live video or something like that, you know, so something is, uh, it might be quite taxed as Sam's computer is at the moment by trying to run Jack Trip and Zoom and mm -hmm. Facebook Live or whatever. Um, so an alternative, for example, would be to communicate via phones instead of the Zoom on the, on the computer. You see what I mean? So you, you could have Skype on or FaceTime on the phone, you know. You just to communicate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like and that. I guess, I guess for live streaming, you need you need to sort the images out. But there are yeah, you need to do something that's true. Yeah. That are better than using Zoom with all of the stuff that's in. Yes, exactly. Um, cool. Okay. Anyway, suffice to say, it, it would work for a live stream. We think it would be completely completely fine. Um, you could do smarter things than I was doing. You could set you you can send yeah. it through Logic and and apply effects to the sound. So if you wanted yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the to be properly EQ'd and the piano to be EQ'd well and all those sorts of things, then you can yes, do it. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, cool. So um, something else that, that you can do is, so instead of recording to Logic, one could look for a, an open source digital audio workstation that is aware of Jack directly, because that would be quite interesting. It would, it would save a step in the chain, as it were. Um, you know any examples of these? Yeah. There's one called ARDO, A-A-R-D-O-U-R. -R. It's not free, mm. that one, but it's kind of Unix and Linux based and a bit more um, niche, but it does work with Jack. And so in, in that... If I hear Linux or Unix, I, I get terrified. And yeah, they're just, they're just kind of slightly more niche operating systems. So mm. the people who use them generally are kind of what you would call a power user. So they would they really know how their way around the computer sort of thing. Um, but it doesn't mean to say that everyone else can't use it as well. I think you can get it for Mac. Yeah. Um, Can you do anything with, for example, GarageBand or like other other ways of with, with GarageBand would be the same as it would be in the same boat as Logic. Logic is just is just kind of like a really posh version of GarageBand. So GarageBand isn't aware of Jack either. Um, yeah. So, so it's basically the only the only benefit would be it would avoid that loopback stuff that we did in the, in the Sapphire um, interface controls. Yeah, on your end. And you could just record the jack channel channels directly, which would be really quite something. It's, it's save one step, and it mm. you would record them on separate tracks. And then, assuming you wanted to use Logic to put the audio together, you would just export the tracks as raw audio and put them into Logic. You know, it it's probably worth people realizing that um, my audio interface seems to be particularly uh, complex. Yeah, yeah, Sam's is particularly um, good to use uh, because it has this inbuilt loopback thing, and it. it has a lot of outputs and inputs and stuff. Mine is a bit a bit basic. Um, but I'm sure I could work something else. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there was, there was this guy, Ben Loveridge. We'll put a link to a document that he has made in the, yeah. in the description as well. Um, but he was using a utility called iPerf to test the connection between the two computers involved and use that as a kind of guide when tweaking the jack trip settings. So that's yeah. like a slightly more sophisticated version of um, trial and error. That we were basically doing you know so we were saying with a certain set speed how how good can we get the settings how low can we get the latency to be um mm. but he did it in a bit of a, a rational way which is cool um you yeah. yeah i'll just get a couple more technical things out of the way and then we'll start yeah. bigger stuff um apparently and it's mentioned in the jack trip documentation you can use it without jack so remember jack is the audio server that runs on the computer mm. jack trip is the thing which connects it over the internet apparently you can just use it directly wired into the audio of the, of the the audio um, server of the um, operating system. So you don't need Jack necessarily. I haven't looked into that, but it's a possibility that, and it's in the Jack trip settings. I don't know if it would be better or worse. It might be a bit less controllable possibly because Jack is so re rewirable, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and then, yeah, so, so 
you were speaking to a couple of people about multiple clients and stuff because obviously we've just done duo so far. So I, yeah, I asked Dan and I asked uh, Mama's Gun. Uh, so, so I don't know if that's the, the correct pronunciation of the band name, but I know, that, I they, know yeah. that they managed to do a live stream involving multiple people. It was really impressive, yeah. yeah. Um, which, yeah, which is obviously the next step a lot of us will be wondering about. Um, they, uh, they were very kind in getting back to me, although they didn't have um, a lot of information about how to do it with something like Jack Trip because they've built their own uh, app for this, I guess. I'm presuming they'll probably, the guy that's made it, um, so what's he called? Doug Hunt. Yeah. Uh, look out for Doug Hunt. Sounds like Duck Hunt, the uh, computer. It does, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, orange, orange uh, pistol. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, look out for, for, for Doug Hunt if you're interested in that. If he's made it into an app, then presumably that would be a lot easier to, to use. It just will also probably... I guess that would be the idea, yeah. Yeah, I really don't know. But... Um, my but, for yeah, my, my assumption for, for that is that it's yeah. He, if he doesn't use Jack Trip and it sounds like he doesn't, then it's presumably they use something based on this UDP protocol. So mm -hmm. the foundational concept, which is to send the data via this very fast form of internet communication, that probably remains in some form. But perhaps it's just organised in a really good way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so to speak to the multiple clients thing, some considerations about that. Uh, I think I know how to do it in Jack Trip. It's just a little bit, little bit of a fiddle. But what you would do is you need to. It's it's actually described in the Jack Trip documentation. You would have two ports open instead of one, so, mm. and you would have two individual clients connecting to the server. So, say it was um, whoever your favourite drummer is. No need to say, uh, but say it was them. They would be another client acting to the server on mm. my end. Okay, and then in the Jack Pilot patch bay where you tweak the settings between inputs and outputs and stuff i would just do a slightly more complicated version in there because i would be receiving audio from you and from the third party but it would be up up to me to route the audio through my computer in such a way that you can hear the third party do you see what i mean so you wouldn't have a direct connection to the third party it would all be mediated by the server which is me um yeah. so you can see that that could get complicated quite fast um the, the other consideration is that the server, which is me, would need more upload capacity. So presumably yeah. twice as much and then three times as much for, yeah. for, for more people. But I do have that now, so that's good. Um, we'll try it. Another, yeah, well, we really could actually. Uh, another alternative um, is something called TPF Client, which mm -hmm. some people in Zurich, uh, one of the universities there, have been developing. That's based on Jack as well, but it's supposed to be a bit more elegant than Jack Trip for doing multiple clients. So the number of interconnections scales in a smaller way with, with the number of people involved. I'm not sure if that makes it faster or not, but it might might do. Um, another thank you. Yeah, and then yeah, that's that's I guess that's kind of it really, you know, like it we've tried to show that it works. Um, it depends crucially on the internet connection quality. Mm. because it's completely at the mercy of that. It gives up any ability to compensate for poor internet quality in order to pursue the lowest latency possible. That's basically the approach, isn't it? Um, yeah. We've gone through, gone through pretty much every step. No, I think we really have, yeah. Uh, but it does mean that, you know, as it's a video, you can, you can always go back. And yeah, exactly. And exactly. So, so we'll, we'll edit it a little bit um, and we will put all the links that are important in the description at the bottom and probably on youtube which would be the best place to put this video as you as you suggested we'll put the um timestamp links or it could yeah. be that the video is so long that we have to put separate videos up for the different sections <laughs> you know um you can post for absolutely hours on youtube which i'm sure will be fine i guess uh, so yeah and with my new upload speed it actually might not take too long for me to upload it, so. it. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay so I, I, um, big big thanks uh, to to John for really learning how to do all of this stuff. I, I've played, hopefully, lovable idiot for the entire <laughs> of this, uh, but John has really put a lot of t lot of time into um, researching how to do this, and it was such an exciting moment when we first uh, had it work for the first. It really time. was, well, yeah, it was incredible. Actually. So thank you, yeah, thank um, you for, for saying that, Sam. Yeah, yeah, but I I just saw it in um as I said I saw it because you commented on Dan Tepler's Facebook page. And I want to emphasize again, we haven't invented anything new. We're not saying with the, the king of um, this or anything, but we just wanted to show that two people who really don't 
<laughs> have, have much of a clue can muddle through it and figure it out and that's why uh, that's why you can as well if you're if you're watching this hopefully if there's one thing you can say about me it's that i don't have much of a clue so that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes well i was including myself as well um okay so i guess i guess that's everything yeah um we run out we will keep uh pursuing this we'll try to you know, maybe send me a message when you get a really good internet day or something like that, and we'll try and get a really super low latency video or something like that. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, let us know if you have any uh, further tips. Let us know if you have any questions, maybe, or the no promises that we'll answer. And if it's been helpful or interesting and you're in a position to do so, donate to Help Musicians UK on their website. And we'll put a link to that as well. Yeah. We do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So have a nice evening, Sam. Uh, I'll speak to you in a second when we decide how to edit this, this giant yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's epic, but you know, it's fine. Yeah. It, it, it's niche. <laughs> it, spent, it passes the afternoon, doesn't it? You know, um, and the evening. Great. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Nice one. Thanks very much. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.